deciding on where to put thick and thin lines can almost be boiled down into science, in two parts. Number one, logical line weight, and number two, emotional line weight. First, logical line weight. Here is a pencil drawing of a key pose from a scene. It needs to be inked. The inking has to make sure that the character reads easily and quickly. It needs to look solid. It needs a hierarchy of line weights. The lines need to flow around the forms. <coughs> the heaviest line weight is around the overall form of the pose or silhouette. Silo. I generally like a slightly heavier line at the bottom of major objects. The jaw. The feet. This gives the whole character a feeling of weight. This example still has a couple mistakes, but Brian is fixing them and I'll replace it. Missing the cuff, the right side of the jacket fold. Legs should have more consistent weight with the rest of the character. The bottom of the left cuff should be inked in this weight. Design elements that are subdivisions of the overall character have a line weight that is still thick, but slightly thinner than the outline of the silo. Like clothes, or the outline of the hair. Not the individual hairs, but the overall form of the hair. Or color separations on animal characters. The details, wrinkles, folds, etc. are the thinnest lines. They should not be totally one weight though, they should be slightly thicker in the middle. These lines need to flow around the larger shapes in the same form and perspective. Where these detail lines come to stop in open space, like the fold on the jacket, the ends should taper to point. Every line on a drawing should mean something. IT should describe something. There should never be floating lines that don't mean anything. All thin detail lines should help describe the larger object they are part of. The following post from a junk cable had lost some of its photos, so I tried to fill them in with some pictures I saw fit. Sorry. The biggest communication tool humans have is our face. We pay more attention to people's faces than any other part of them. In cartoons we assign a disproportional size and emphasis to the face because of this. Certain parts of the face are the important elements that make the expression. Main features, eyebrows, eye shapes, pupils, cheeks, nose and larger teeth shape. These essential features have thick lines to draw attention to the emotion of the character. The overall shape of the mouth is very important to the expression and should have a slightly thick line to draw attention to the shape. Whether it is an open mouth or a closed mouth, the shape of the mouth itself tells us a lot about the character's emotion. The lines at the edges of the mouth shape are very important. I like to make them a bit thicker in the middle which gives the effect of a shadow. This helps solidify the expression. The smile lines and the cheek above together create a firm, a piece of flesh that is somewhat triangular. This form stretches and squashes to make expressions whatever the smile line does affects the cheek line above. That form points to the top of the nostril like an arrow. When inking a smile line or a cheek line you have to look at the other line at the same time so that the two lines together make a fleshy sensible form. Even without the details and wrinkles, the expression should read strong and clearly. The outline of the whole shape of all the teeth is thick. Then the individual teeth are thinner clearly. All details are subject to the larger features that they help define. They have to flow sensibly around the head in the same directions of the parts of the expression they help define. None of these lines should float or be arbitrary. They need to help the face be fleshy. These lines are thinner. Individual teeth. Wrinkles, crow's feet, eyebrow wrinkles, bottom lip wrinkles. Tongue split. I was born in the back of a wooden rain.